I don't know about you guys, but I sure am excited that we're back in egg cutting season. And today, we actually have nine eggs, a pretty good clutch. This was our third clutch of the year. It was actually our first clutch last year with this pairing, and it happens to be a genetic stripe. Just a really beautiful, recessive mutation. And I absolutely love the male that fathered this clutch. This is actually a pastel banana genetic stripe. What an absolute ripper. Let's see what's in this clutch. So because the G-stripe is actually a recessive mutation, and of course the banana G-stripe is a incomplete dominant and there's a pastel that you get all kinds of combinations of pastel g-stripes g-stripes banana g-stripes pastel banana g-stripes regardless they're all going to be g-stripes let's go to egg number one here we go again we know they're all going to be g-stripes we just don't know what else is going to be going on in them this looks like an actual just normal g-stripe right off the rip right i don't see any pastel in it got a really nice dorsal striping because some g-stripes aren't quite as good as other ones that is an absolute spectacular one egg number two here we go and again some clutches there's going to be lots of surprises and some clutches not so much this one at least we know there's going to be g-stripes but right off the rip we've got a banana g-stripe in here gosh it looks so pretty doesn't it banana a really tiny stripe on it now it could be a pastel banana g-stripe don't really know until they hatch out and actually go through a shed we'll find out that but nevertheless definitely a banana g-stripe possibly a pastel banana g-stripe egg number three I tell you, G-stripes are just really cool. As a matter of fact, just recently I saw someone produce, this is another banana G-stripe for sure. Just recently I saw a G-stripe clown that someone produced and oh my goodness, that thing was crazy. So that's definitely a project I'm gonna be going on in the future. So that's two banana G-stripes, one G-stripes, egg number four. There we go. What do we have? Another banana G-stripe. And this one definitely isn't pastel because you can see a lot of color. Look at that really cool striping on it. I tell you, banana G-stripes are unbelievable. One of my favorite of the bananas for sure. So we've already got three of them in this clutch and we still have five eggs to go. There we go. Oh, normal G-stripe. Actually, this is a pastel G-stripe. So that's really cool. Now that pastel, you can see it's a little bit more diluted, has kind of a really cool look to it. So that is really cool. So we have a normal G-stripe, three banana G-stripes, and a pastel G-stripe, egg number six. So far, I love it. I tell you what, just cutting eggs, it's just so freaking awesome. We got another normal G-stripe here. And you can really see the difference between that pastel and the normal G-stripe. The thing I love so far is the stripes on these G-stripes are really good stripes. So this is this is looking like a really banging clutch. We got three eggs. And here we go. What do we have now? Every egg is like another pastel G-stripe. Another really beautiful stripe too. Again, every egg is just like, it's like opening up Christmas every single day. It's absolutely incredible. Two eggs to go and then we're done with egg cutting for the day. That's kind of sad, but let's cut this next egg. There we go. I see some darkness, which means it's probably at least a normal G-stripe, if not a pastel G-stripe. Let's see what we got. Yep, looks like a pastel G-stripe. Again, just a lot more yellow. The normal G-stripe's more brownish tan. These are more yellow. So we've been crushing it, man. We've been getting some really cool animals. Last egg, what will we have? I'm gonna call it a pastel banana G-stripe. And you gotta be kidding me. It's a pastel banana cheese stripe. And by the way, guys, be careful when you're cutting eggs because you don't wanna hurt the animals, but you also don't wanna cut yourself. I get so excited that I literally cut myself cutting an egg. That is the first time I've ever cut myself while I've cut eggs. I've been cutting eggs for like 30 years. That is absolutely crazy, but that's how excited I was. And it was cool that we called the last one. So uh, that's it for egg cutting for the day. And by the way, welcome to the blog, Reptile Army. I hope the start of your day is amazing. As a matter of fact, you can go over to reptilearmy.com, get yourself the swag, join the army. It's a good thing for the reptile hobby. So go ahead to reptilearmy.com. This is a pretty cool snake here. You know how we have the Oreo Pueblans? Well, this is actually like an Oreo Pueblan, but a hypo Oreo Pueblan. So essentially what it is, is the a less red in it causes it to be an Oreo. So instead of black red and yellow it's just basically black and white but with the hypo it's this kind of brownish kind of purplish looking thing it's the first hypo oreo that we've ever had and it's coming up to size maybe next year we'll be able to breed this little monkey i absolutely love it seems like it's been forever since i've showed off some blue tongue skinks this is actually what they call an eye banded eastern so there's the northerns the eastern centralians westerns you know all kinds of different flavors of the Australian ones. The Northerns are the most common of the Australian ones here in the country. And then Easterns are a little bit less common. These guys are kind of from the Sydney area. And I absolutely love blue tongue skinks and the Easterns are wicked. And then this would actually be another Eastern, but what they call a hypo Eastern. So these are really cool. These typically come from the Brisbane area. And the hypo melanism just causes the kind of fainting pattern and stuff like that. I haven't bred the Easterns ever. I've never produced any babies. So hopefully with any luck this year, I'll be able to do it coming up. Basically what you have to do is you have 
have to cool them off a lot more than the northerns. I mean, sometimes taking them down into the 50s, believe it or not, for a brumation period. So with any luck, maybe we'll get some easterns this coming season. And then, of course, we still work with the northerns, and this is actually a sunset northern here. I mean, just that really super high orange looking animal. Absolutely incredible. They're super polymorphic, and I certainly have not paid the blue tongue skinks nearly enough love lately as far as on the vlog goes. We still love them here at the shop, but uh, I need to get them into the vlog more because they are absolutely wonderful. So today we are going to try to start tongue feeding our baby Argus monitors. I've personally never tried this before. I have very little to no hope whatsoever that this is going to work, but that doesn't mean we can't try, baby. <laughs> Please do not fly out. I have my hands full. Don't fly out. Okay, good. They do not know what this ball means, but we gotta learn them one day. Stick this ball right in there. All right, guys, you see the ball? See the ball? I'm not gonna get it too close. They're terrified of the damn thing. I know it's terrifying. It's food. I wish someone stuck food in my face. Typically, we leave the worms in here, but like we say, we're trying to break boundaries, baby. You see it? It's a worm. It's food. It's food. So that was a complete and utter failure, but what I'm hoping is one day it will help us in the future. Gotta learn from our losses, baby. What do they say? Wins and lessons, not losses. Ooh. <laughs> Take a look at this ripper right here. Unbelievable. This is actually a high white, black and white cow king, but it's got mainly the bands. The bands aren't actually perfect bands on it, but wow, the contrast on this. This is just a stunning animal right there. And basically what it is, the black and white cow kings are what they would call a desert phase cow king out in California. And then over generations, you polygenically breed for higher and higher white. So this is probably five, six generations then breeding the highest white animals. And then you get this absolutely stunning contrast black and white snake. Always excited about this girl. She is definitely top five favorite ball pythons that I have. Okay, top 10, maybe top 25. I don't know. Regardless, she is a pastel crystal, absolutely ripping animal. She's actually bred to another pastel crystal, so we can get all kinds of combination of like super Mojave, super specials, pastel super specials, pastel super Mojave, stuff like that. It's gonna be an absolutely amazing clutch. Same breeding last year, and last year the clutch was absolutely incredible. Ironically enough, this is the third year in a row that this female has laid, so she is definitely a good mama. Let's go ahead and see how many eggs she has. Mama, don't get mad at me. I know you're just such a good girl. Oh. There she goes. She is definitely not happy, but look at that clutch right there. Absolutely gorgeous. And here we go. Mama, you did awesome, man. She is definitely not happy. She's like, give me those eggs back. So we'll get Mama all cleaned up, get her washed up, and make her feel like she can forget about her eggs and get that maternal instinct away. Wow, look at this clutch right here. We got two, four, six, eight, ten gorgeous eggs. Like I said, those animals are all going to be super Mojave, super special, pastel, super special, pastel, super Mojave. So hey, that's a really, really good clutch of eggs. So uh, hey, I couldn't complain. That is absolutely wonderful. When the eggs are laid like this in a clump, the way I incubate, we actually have shallow egg boxes and that's just to keep the humidity really up on these guys. So I prefer the shallow egg boxes. You can certainly go with deeper ones. You just have to fight with the humidity a little bit more. But unfortunately with the shallow ones means you have to slowly tear the eggs apart. Now, the longer they're adhered together, the harder harder they are to get apart. You can tear these eggs, so you have to be very, very gentle, slowly taking the eggs apart, and then I just get them low enough to where they can actually fit in the egg box. And trust me, I've torn an egg or two in the past, so now I'm extremely gentle. So obviously, this was not ideal. Not what I want. But the good news is, you get to hang out with me for a little longer than you normally do. It's important that we get them to calm down and get them to start thinking again. Now, unfortunately, the hard part about that, being an animal that's out in the open all, all, all the time, sometimes can lead to them being scared to come up to the front. So we've got to find a way around that, which does lead to a little bit of difficulty on a lot of animals. Honestly, I think he's got a lot of promise. He's come up on so many occasions. As always, it always has a little bit to do with the cameras. I think it's just because they're so smart. They think that's just a, it's like a giant eye staring at them. Like, it's the all-seeing eye. This happens to be a granite corn snake, which is actually a diffused aneurythristic corn snake. You can just take a look at how beautiful that snake is. You can really see that those diffused sides are why they call them diffused corns. In the normal corns, they call them blood red, but obviously when you get them into aneury, there's no red in them, so they change the name from blood red to diffused corns, which is understandable. And she's actually het for scaleless, and she's bred to an aneury scaleless. A beautiful clutch of eggs here. Looks like a little bit of desiccation, and definitely looks like some eggs might have rolled around a little bit, so we'll have to candle those guys. Remember, 
remember we always candle things when they seem to be rolling around so let's go ahead and just get all these eggs and see how interesting this is every now and then you'll have a little string that connects the eggs together and I just have to break that away and it's just really easy to just snap it like that it's weird that you don't see it that often and you really only see it in colubrids typically corn snakes amongst all things and it's only maybe a handful of clutches a year I have no idea why it's the case like that but it's definitely weird regardless she had a pretty decent clutch like I said we'll go ahead and candle these just to make sure they're all on the right side up but she had two four six eight ten beautiful eggs I absolutely love this girl right here she is an absolute beauty this is actually a tessera that is het for albino scalus that's bred to an albino scalus the tessera is actually a snake that has this really cool racing stripe really cool pattern it's actually an incomplete dominant animal which is weird because most corn snakes are recessive or polygenic this just basically means if you breed a tessera to a normal about half the babies come out to Sarah so we can get some albino to Sarah scaleless and some to Sarah scaleless absolutely wonderful snakes no doubt about it it looks like she laid a beautiful clutch egg so let's go ahead take a look really quick yep that's a nice clutch eggs it does look like we've got one or two little sluggers in there we'll go ahead pull these out and see what she's got going on uh yeah one little slug here we've got two slugs there but other than that we've got two four six eight ten twelve thirteen beautiful eggs i tell you what this is going to be a really cool clutch when it hatches out hope you guys enjoyed today's vlog if you did and you love egg cutting here is another playlist right over here of egg cutting galore if you don't mind on this side do me a favor and hit that subscription button it means the world to me have an absolutely wonderful day reptile army remember be kind to someone and i promise i'll see you tomorrow